All right, so let's take a look at multiplying decimals with this lesson. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is in my expression, I'm looking at multiplying 23 and 1 tenth times 1 and 5 tenths. So the first step, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at this two different ways. I'm going to talk about the process or the strategy to solve using the standard algorithm. And then afterwards, I'm going to flip back around and talk about why I've done some of the things that I've chosen to do. So the first step I want to do, just like with the standard algorithm, is I'm going to select the number with the largest amount of digits so that that can kind of go on top. And I'm going to put 2, 3, 1 times 15. Now, there's a couple different approaches you can go at here. For me, I'm going to go ahead and keep the decimals in. Just as a reminder, this is, these are the two numbers that I'm multiplying. From here, I'm going to no, uh, multiply just like normal. I'm going to lean on my understanding of whole digit multiplication using the standard algorithm. For a moment, I'm going to forget about the decimals being there, and I'm just going to simply multiply. I know that my first step is to multiply everything on the top but within 23 and 1 tenths times 5. So 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to regroup a 1 here. 2 times 5 plus 1. So I'll get this. That's my first partial product. Then the next number I'm going to focus on is the 1 here. So I'm going to multiply 2, 3, and 1 times 1. But before I do so, I want to make sure I put my placeholder 0. Um, 1, 3, and 2. And the second partial product will be added with the first partial product to get the beginning of my final answer. Now, from here I have uh, what appears to be 3,465. However, we need to consider the fact that I didn't multiply 231 times 15. I multiplied 23 and 1 tenths times 1 and 5 tenths. So I need to really kind of think through something is that these decimals have a bit of an implication on the final answer. If you'll notice, I was 1 two places behind the decimal. I looked at both numbers being multiplied and took took the total number of places to the right of the decimal and I put those together then I'll come down and go one two and my decimal comes right there between the four and the six therefore my answer becomes 34 and 65 hundredths now why am I moving the decimal and placing it where I placed it let me show you so that you can gain a little bit of an understanding of what that's looking like. So I'm going to move this over and I want to talk about what I really did because that original partial product was essentially 231 times 15. And then from there I did some work on the final product of that number. So let's talk about how did we get there. Well with, a t with an expression, I can do some things to kind of change the value to get them where I want to get them. For example, what if I looked at 231 and I multiplied that by one-tenth, which is the same as dividing it by one-tenth. And then I'm going to multiply that by 15 times 1 over 10. Because if I haven't changed the value, if I were to evaluate these expressions, I would get 200 or 23 and 1 tenth times 1.5. But what I've done for, for argument's sake is I'm taking and I'm re-expressing the numbers so that I can allow this strategy to have some mathematical bearing on it. So now I know with the commutative property along with the associative property of multiplication that it doesn't matter necessarily the order in which I multiply these numbers. For example, I know that 2 times 2 times 3 equals 12 as well as 3 times 2 times 2 equals 12. Likewise, I can go 2 times 3 times 2 equals 12. So as long as I have the multiplications 
or the multiplication in the problem across the board, we know with order of operations, it does not have a bearing. The answer will come out the same. So uh, let me get rid of this. Let's talk about how could I change this up. So what if I took and I, I, I take this expression right here and I said 231 times 15 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. Now, look what we see here. Let's take, change what color here. I can look here and see that original problem working itself out. 231 times 15. Even though in this original setup of the problem, even though while right here I put a decimal in the problem, when I multiplied it, I really was finding just 231 times 15. And when I've got that final answer, when I got that final answer, I wasn't seeing that there was a decimal there. That final answer for me was a nice whole number of 3,465. Then at that point, I asked myself, where does the decimal go? Now, if you see that what I've already done is done this math right here, then the last step is to do one-tenth times one-tenth. Well, what if I simplified one-tenth times one-tenth? Well, that would be one one-hundredth. So if I take now my final answer and I multiply that by times one one-hundredth, which is the same as divided by 100. I know that from our understanding of place values is that digits, when divided, move to the right. And so when I divide it, it doesn't just move one place, it moves two places. So if I were to work that out and solve it, which if, if I do, and I could do a place value chart, Howard, I could say, well, that would be 34 and 65 hundreds because I know that, and I'll do a quick place value chart because I really want this point to hit home so that you don't think that I'm just plugging in a decimal. I want you to see how the math. Now, again, I'll stress over and over and over again is that the, the strategy is where I want you to land, but I want you to understand why we do what we do on the strategy. Here's just a quick... Place value chart, I know my decimals right here, I got my tenths, my hundredths, my thousandths. If I am dividing this number by 100, I know each digit moves two places to the right. And that would be five, six, the decimal never moves, four and three. So we see from here, this is how I can look at this number and simply plug in a decimal between the four and the six. Now, let's take a look at all this. A lot of work just to get right here, but as I have tried to stress to us, is this here is the standard algorithm, and this is where I want us landing and how we do our work. I want us to set the problems up, solve, uh, multiply as if it were whole numbers, which as fifth graders we should be fluent at at this point, and then, at the end, we are going to readjust by adding our decimal at that point. Now, by coming up top and counting, I can count the two spots and allow those two spots to be just plugged in. That's the strategy. But, all of this over here to this side, this is the thinking behind the strategy. This is ultimately the most important part of it. I want you to see that we're not just sticking it in randomly in terms of where that decimal goes. Yes, we're counting place values behind the decimal up on our original expression, but there is a mathematical reason for that placement. For you, I want you to gain a better understanding of how to set up the standard algorithm, and I want more than anything for you to build your confidence in not only how to use it, but what's going on when you use it. So, I hope this helps with your understanding of multiplying decimals. Till next time, talk to you soon.